All right, well, this is the first official video in the new shed. So I actually haven't filmed anything since Tullarook, I think was the last thing I filmed. I had a backlog of videos and uh, I've just been flat out playing in here. I've got a bit going on here um, and with work and then a few other things are going on. So I haven't actually had a chance to even do anything, let alone film anything. But we do have a couple exciting things coming up. One of them might be these, but stay tuned for that. Uh, hopefully in the next week or two, I'll know a bit more. So they've got a couple of things coming up which are gonna be pretty sick, so keep an eye out for that. But yeah, this come about, I was actually just on Facebook and something popped up, which I see pretty often, um, about the winch not working and how to fix it. This pretty much applies to any winch. It doesn't matter if it's one of these, a high mount, um, a low mount, it doesn't matter. They all operate in the same principle. So um, yeah, it's relevant to whatever winch you got on the front. So this has actually happened to me before um, and now like it's happened a few times to me and I try and um, like test my winch before I go anywhere whether I just run the rope uh, back on nicely ready for the first winch of the drive or anything like that I just test the winch before I go but it has happened once where I did test the winch before I went and then went out for a drive uh, it was actually Alice track got to the big rock sort of halfway up Perched the car up on the rock, had to winch, and uh, clicked the button, and all it did was click, 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 no winch. So that was a pain in the butt. But believe it or not, uh, with the car still perched up on the rock, uh, we managed to fix the winch, um, make it work again, and we're on our way. So most of the time, this is the problem. Like This is the most common problem, and you can fix it out on the track, providing you've got a couple basic tools and uh, a bit of WD-40 or something, which is, I carry some in the back. So this generally happens when your solenoids are mounted out in the weather like these. Um, I've been pretty good with these because I've sealed them up when I bought them. Um, but generally, like, if your solenoid's under the bonnet or you know out of the way, uh, it doesn't happen as often. But for a long time now, I've had my solenoids mounted on the end of the motors. I just like how neat it is. Um, just makes it one package and i know how to fix them so if it becomes a problem um it's not hard to fix and i actually like as part of a maintenance schedule i suppose um i do this pretty often so it keeps them in tip-top shape so other than the obvious things like if you've had your car just sitting out in the weather and the winch was working when you parked it up and then you go to use it again and it doesn't work it's generally this little bugger this solenoid on the end of the motor so this style of solenoids found on pretty much all winches these days. The old school worn solenoids uh, on the high mounts, they're a bit different to this. Uh, but most of the low mounts, uh, as far as I know, and anything like these competition winches and all that, uh, they all come with like this Albright style solenoid. And what happens is uh, water inevitably gets inside, uh, moisture builds up in there, or, or if, like, if it's on the front and you're doing a lot of river crossings, or like I said, it's out in the weather, uh, water can get in. Um, it can actually get in from a few spots. One of them's around these tabs. So this is a um, in power, earth and out power. And if you bend these tabs like I have here, there's a hard resin around these tabs that cracks and then water will sit in there and, and seep in. Um, it can get in around the bottom of these terminals from these screws around this See, we're in this lip here where this uh, the plastic separates these back screws so I can get in a few spots uh, Probably the most common one is this um, These tabs at the front though So the first obvious thing like if you go to press your button or anything and nothing happens um, I'd be checking power supply obviously all them obvious things. I'm not going to go through them, but you know power supply switch, you know all sorts of stuff whatever triggers your winch that could also be a problem, but uh, I'm not going to go through that because that's a whole different ball game. Um, so providing that your winch is wired up properly, 
um, you won't have a problem with the wiring. So we'll just go through this little sucker and pull it apart. So first thing to do is you'd pull this solenoid off um, and find somewhere easy to work on it. And we want to undo any of these screws on this bottom half. So sometimes I have four in the back. Um, this is obviously has two in the back, two in the front. Some of them have screws on the bottom here. Um, yeah, you just need to undo anything associated with this bottom half of the solenoid. Keep them separate um, because I know these ones, the ones with the screws on the bottom, they're different from the ones on the side, even though they look the same. All right, so once you get these screws out, um, two there and then two on the back, this I've already separated. I've already sealed this up once before, but that will separate. Um, this solenoid's been apart a few times, so it's it's pretty haggard. So you can see I broke the end off it a while back, um, but still good for a spare. So that's what happens when you pull the bottom cap off. Yeah, um, you're left with these. Now I'm no professional, so I don't know what these are actually called connectors, or I don't know what they are, but. Most of the time, um, you'll pull this bottom cap off and it'll be full of water. And every, so every time this has happened to me, even like I, the winch has still worked and I've just pulled it off for a maintenance thing. You pull it off, it's half full of water. And then you look under there and all this is rusted. And then these, these don't move. So these obviously need to move because they're pinned through these contact things and then they contact in here, which we'll pull apart in a second. So pretty much all I've had to do in the past is just WD-40 in there, in both of them holes, and just free them up. So that's as simple as it has to be. Um, you know, every time this has happened to me, that's all it's been. So literally like four bolts, a bit of stuffing around, separate that, WD-40, bang these together, bang, bang, bang. They free up put it back together, put it back on your winch, and away you go. But if that doesn't fix your problem, we'll go one step further, and we'll pull this top off and have a look at all the connectors in there. So for starters, you've got to pull out all your bolts, this nut off here, um, so strip all that bare, and there's brass rings that actually screw on to hold this top down. So you've got to be very careful um, not to deform them, so don't crank on them too hard, um, otherwise you'll end up deforming them. Uh, but yeah, quickly crack them with the pliers and wind these off. And you gotta be careful because underneath there's an O-ring as well, you can't lose that O-ring either. Also there's two Phillips head screws um, under these black caps here, so don't forget to get them. So once you get them two screws, this actually comes apart. Be careful because them wires are still joined. There goes a screw. Um, so you don't want to be ripping these wires out and there's also like a little spacey gasket there to stop any um, arcing out on there um, but these terminals go through these two holes which go on the other side so if they're, if they're seized up out or, or in or whatever and they're not making the proper connection um, that's why your solenoid won't be working but from here we can, um, we can pull out all these all the um, copper bars connected all together. So you can see these O-rings around these terminals here. Um, there to seal the top of the terminal up, obviously. So they're pretty tight, like the O-ring is pretty tight on the terminal and it's hard to sort of push it through. But once you push it through, this whole bit comes out. So that's obviously the other side. So that comes out like that. And then you can see all your contacts in here. And obviously the other side's exactly the same, but I've never had a problem with a solenoid in this area. Like I've never had to pull it apart this far to get them working. Um, this is just to, to show you how to strip them down. You can see in, um, if that'll focus, you can see there's a fair bit of wear on that. So I'm pretty sure these solenoids are actually the same age as these motors, which is the same age as the Hornet one on my wagon, which is probably like 10 years old or something. Um, so they've done a fair bit of work, but you can see all, all the contact patches everywhere. If you get, if you're digging this far to, to fix a solenoid, um, the problem's 
might be a bit bigger, probably just worth replacing the solenoid. But yeah, that's how they come apart. So obviously you push this one out as well. So push that one out, take that out. And then there's a bar up the back, which is this back terminal here. And then, and then they're all out. That, the, that's the whole solenoid apart. So yeah, now that that's all apart, um, you've checked it all. It all looks good. You've freed up these little terminals here. Um, put it all back together. I run a seal of, um, yeah, whatever, gasket goo around, just a little smear on that sealed edge there. Um, and then I gasket goo these top screw holes uh, because water can get past these little plastic bungs. And then what it does is it sits on top of the screw head there. And then when you go to pull it apart, you pop this screw head off, uh, this cap off, and the screw head there is full of rust or water seeped around it and rusted the thread into the solenoid. Um, that's what happened to mine, but I managed to just get it apart. Um, so yeah, I just gasket goo that. And then I also gasket goo the screws on the back, front and back as well. Just not excessive, just a little smear, uh, just enough to, to give it that bit of an extra seal. But if you've gone that deep in the solenoid, put it back together and it's still not working, assuming that you've checked all your electrical stuff and your battery and, and all that other stuff, um, I've got a winch motor here that will quickly pull down. Um, there's not much to them, but we'll pull that down and uh, I'll show you potentially what can happen to these. All right, so we have here it's, um, an old Bow 2 motor. It was off this red winch. It actually come from the factory with this motor. This is, I had two of these on this winch and uh, yeah, they just sort of had enough. So um, for starters, what you do, they're only holding with two bolts at the end um, and they go all the way through. So they go all the way through the motor and they bolt into the housing. So you need to undo them, they'll be long. Um, they might have like heat shrink or something on them just to protect um, protect them from the inside if in case they arc out or anything. So pull them off, make sure the heat shrink's in, in good condition, pull them out. Now when you pull the motor off, you have to be careful on a high mount because the uh, pinion gear, I think it's called, that's on the end of the shaft here, may actually fall off and go down into the bottom of the winch and then you'll be stuck pulling the top hat off. Um, so what you gotta do is, uh, I think you actually, from memory, you gotta pull the free spool lever out. I think it's a four bolt, three or four bolts, pull the free spool lever out and the pinion gear sits on that free spool lever. I, this is really testing my memory. Um, and I think you can actually flip them upside down so then the free spool lever's the other way around. It's something along those lines, or just buy a free spool delete and be done with it. Um, so yeah, be careful when you're pulling them off a high mount. Um, these don't really matter, or the Hornet ones, you, um, there's a dog engagement gear to the brake. Um, you gotta be careful of that. And the Hornet two, I don't think there's anything. And the low mount, I'm actually not sure, and they're actually at a low mount apart, shocking. Um, but I'd assume that there's nothing to worry about. I, I'm assuming you can just pull the motor off them. I don't think there'd be anything in there. So once you have the motor off, you need to pull this end cap off. Um, it can be a bit tricky because there's actually a bearing that sits in this recess here. So you gotta actually like pop the cap off that bearing. Um, it can be a little bit tricky. I think worn six horses are the same. They have like an outer casing. Um, the Iskra motors, I actually can't remember. They've got a screw on end cap. They're pretty easy. Um, but yeah, so pop this end cap off. And pop that off. And then that reveals your brushes. So this is a bit of a tricky bit. Well, not so much this bit, getting it back in. You pull the armature out and then all the brushes go flying. So don't be too scared if you see that. Um, and then you can pull the armature out and have a look. So when you're looking at these, um, you want to inspect this brass bit pretty good. I don't know if that'll focus there, but you can see it's got a bit of marking there and there. Um, there's a bit of resin missing off these end bits, another bit of resin broken off there. Uh, all in all, it probably looks all right. That's, that's a bit average on there. But yeah, that's what the inside looks like. And then you got these brushes. So these are spring loaded in these little housings here. And obviously the springs hold tension onto the armature. What you gotta be looking for is how worn out they are. So 
So when you buy a brand new motor, you know, they'll be, they'll be a fair bit longer. Um, for some motors, you can actually buy a whole new brush housing kit, which is what I've actually done to these years ago. I bought a new brush set. Um, but yeah, I know for the Iskras you can as well, and there's probably your, the Red Winch, the Ox motors and that, you can do it. Um, but on the Iskra motors and the Red Winch Ox motors, so that's these bad boys here. The brushes are actually a bit tricky because they've got a housing over it and the brushes are on the inside of the housing. Uh, so it is a bit tricky to get the brushes back open. Um, on, the, on these, they're actually pretty easy. But yeah, on these suckers and the ox motors, they're a little bit tricky. Years ago, we had problems, I remember, with the old, uh, the worn six horsepower motors and the brushes would actually get stuck inside this housing. So uh, the solenoid would click, everything would click, but nothing had happened. And yeah, what it was is, um, yeah, the carbon brushes were sort of, they'd seize, like a bit of moisture would get in, they'd seize back and they wouldn't make connection with the armature and then she's no go. So um, that was well, probably talking 10, eight, 10 years ago now. Um, but I haven't encountered that problem since. So then you'd inspect the inside here. You can see it's sort of been rubbing on these magnetic plates as well. Um, but just a general look over in there. These um, connections on these copper bars here. Uh, check all them out. Another problem I actually had was the nut seized up on the terminal. And then what I actually done was spin the stud and then it broke the copper. Um, it like must have resin or something on it. It broke the resin and then the copper bar separated from the stud and then the motor wouldn't work. It was actually probably this motor or, or the second one to this. It was one of these anyway. And I had to re-solder the copper bit back to the stud. That was a bit annoying. But Roadrunner actually sell their own branded motors, uh, the Roadrunner Bullet 68s. And they actually, when they get their motors, they strip all that out of it and they coat the inside with this orange uh, corrosive proof paint. And um, they put a breather in the end cap as well to sort of help with moisture build up and things like that. Um, but they coat everything, the armature, the inside, like everything's coated in this special paint to stop any rust building up or any corrosion building up. So that's something to remember. I'm off the top of my head, they're the only people that do that to their own motors. Like there's no other motor out there that comes with this coating on it. Um, and then bullet motors is probably what I'll put on this. So this is the part where you need like three hands. Um, you got to try and get all the brushes back in and obviously their springs are trying to push them out. And then you got to get the armature back up the guts of it and get the brushes pushed back far enough they sit over that copper bit. Um, I usually get a big nut or something like that's bigger than the head of this hammer and you can sort of push all the brushes back, slip the nut in there and then you slip the armature up from the bottom. Um, but I don't have a big nut here so uh, I'm going to try this hammer head. Um, it's a little bit fiddly but you'll get there in the end. All right, it's all back together. Don't forget when you're knocking this end cap on, uh, if you don't support the armature, you'll you'll tap this with the with the hammer and it'll knock the armature back out and then you'll have to reset your brushes don't ask me how i know that that's annoying so yeah that's about it um if you're having winch problems doing that will somehow find out what sort of problems you're having but realistically like 95 percent of the time you pull that bottom cap off free up them two um connector pins and literally like that'll sort out your problem that could save you buying a solenoid or like where I was stuck literally on a winch rock. Um, so that could save like someone else trying to winch you up or back and down or whatever. Um, literally, yeah, pulled the solenoid off, fixed it, put it back on, literally 20, half an hour job. And uh, yeah, winch was flying again all day. So yeah, I hope that's some valuable information for you. I know that's been very valuable to me ever since I was shown how to pull one of them apart. Um, like I said, I sort of religiously, maybe like every time you service it or even before a big trip, if I'm going for a, a, a big drive somewhere or a weekend away and I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of winching, like the solenoids, I like them there as well because they're easily accessible. Like I'll literally whip them off, pull the bottom caps off. If there's any, any water in there, empty it out, WD-40, frame up, 
put them back together and I know the winch is going to work all weekend, no problems. So yeah, I hope you learned something. I uh, hope could potentially save you some money buying some solenoids. Um, but if you have damaged anything, your motor, your solenoid beyond repair, you know where to go and get it. And that's the good guys at Road Run Off Road. So other than that, we'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Go left hand down a touch, I reckon. Oh, we should have done that to start with. What do you think, Sherry? Fucking shit, you. <laughs> <laughs> you.